We are the champions. We are the champions. No time for losers. Cause we are the champions. What's up, slackers? Welcome to Book Cheats. Today, we're going to be talking about To Kill a Mockingbird, Chapter 15. So at the beginning of this chapter, it leaves right off where the last chapter left off, and Dill has to beg his mom over the phone to stay for the rest of the summer. But he doesn't listen. But Lumba, honey, honey, look at, look at this. After a ton of begging and a ton of pleading, his mom finally gave in and said that it was okay for Dill to stay the rest of the summer. Scout says that everything was perfect for about two weeks and no commotion went on. And she says that it was perfect until one night. So one night, there was a knock at the door. Jem went to answer the door, and outside the door, there was a big group of men. Jem came to Atticus and told him that the sheriff was outside, along with a bunch of other men, and Jem said that they wanted to talk to Atticus outside. Scout sort of gives an insight to Maycomb County's tradition, and she says that when men went outside in Maycomb County, it was either to talk about someone's death or to talk about politics. As Atticus went outside, Scout wondered who had died. Jem tried to walk outside with Atticus, and Atticus blocked him and told Jem to stay inside. Jem, Dill, and Scout rushed to the windows to see what was going on, and Scout says that when she looked out the window, it looked like everybody was talking at the same time. I don't know what we're yelling about! Scout tried to listen in, and it seemed like everybody was talking about the trial that was supposed to happen that Monday over Tom Robinson. The men were trying to plead with Atticus not to defend Tom Robinson, and they told Atticus that a big mob was forming who were going to try to kill Tom Robinson. Atticus was firm in his standpoint that he was going to defend Tom. A man named Mr. Link Dees tried to convince Atticus not to take the case by saying that he had everything to lose and nothing to gain. The men were trying to convince Atticus not to take the case because Tom was black and they knew that Atticus had no chance whatsoever of winning the case. Atticus calmly defended his position and said that Tom might go to the electric chair but the truth was going to be heard first. Basically saying that he was going to defend Tom no matter what because Tom had a right to be defended. And the phone rang and Jem shouted at Atticus to come inside because the phone was ringing. All the men jumped because they didn't expect such a loud voice to come from the house. Jem sort of misunderstood what these men were trying to do because they were honestly just friends of Atticus trying to convince him so that he didn't get hurt. And Atticus joked and told Jem to answer the phone himself. The men started to laugh and the crowd dispersed. After the crowd left, Atticus went inside and sat down in his chair and started to read. Scout said that this was one of the only forms that her father Atticus had of escaping the world and his problems. Jim was worried for Atticus's life, and he asked Atticus what those men outside wanted with him. Atticus told Jem that there were just some friends trying to look out for Atticus, and he told Jem that mobs didn't exist and the Ku Klux Klan didn't exist anymore. Atticus said that sort of a fake Ku Klux Klan formed back in the day in Maycomb County, and Mr. Sam Levy sort of dispersed them because he came outside their house, and he sort of laughed at them because he had made the wardrobe that they were wearing. The men were so embarrassed that they dispersed and nobody heard anything from the Ku Klux Klan in Maycomb County since then. Later that day, Scout and Dill came inside from playing and as they came inside, they overheard Atticus and Aunt Alexandria arguing over the same thing. Aunt Alexandria was trying to convince Atticus not to defend Tom because Atticus was putting his family in danger and he really didn't have anything to gain from it. Aunt Alexandria said that there was a bunch of angry men who wanted to hurt Atticus now. The next day was Sunday, one day before the trial, and after the sermon at church, right before the Sunday school class, a bunch of men surrounded Atticus again. It seemed like that same crowd of men who were outside the front door the day before, and many of these men had never come to church before. Scout includes one man who had never been to church who came to the church to talk to Atticus, whose name was Mr. Underwood. Mr. Underwood was the writer of the Maycomb Tribune, one of Maycomb County's only papers, and all of the men came to try to dissuade Atticus from defending Tom Robinson in court. That day after church, Atticus went into his office to read, 
and Jem went into his room to look at football magazines. And Jem and Scout wanted to go outside and shoot some critters with their BB guns, but they weren't allowed to because on Sundays that was inappropriate behavior. Dill suggested that they go bug Boo Radley like they did before, and Scout sort of blows off that idea, and instead she entertains Dill by telling him all the crazy stories that went on last winter with her beating up Francis and all the other crazy crap that went down. That night after dinner, Atticus was acting really strange. He was walking around the house looking for certain things, and he eventually found an extension cord and a light. Atticus told the children that he was going to go out, and that he wanted to say goodnight to the children right then. And Atticus took the extension cord and the light, and left the house and drove off in his car. Scout just thought that Atticus was going on a walk, which was something that he thoroughly enjoyed, but Jem knew something was up. Later that night, right around the time when Scout was getting ready for bed, she heard Jem sort of hustling and bustling in his room. Kevin, what are you doing? Alicia! Scout snuck over to Jem's room and saw that Jem was getting ready to go out. Scout asked Jem what the heck he was doing, and Jem said that he wanted to check up on Atticus and that he was worried about him. Scout insisted that she was going to come along, and when Jem saw that she wasn't going to budge, he decided to concede and let her come. After Aunt Alexandria's lights went out, Jem and Scout snuck outside and went over to Miss Rachel's house where Dill was staying. They snuck up behind the house and knocked on Dill's window. And Dill quietly looked out the window and disappeared for a few minutes. After a few minutes of Dill dressing, he snuck out the window and they quietly snuck to the street. Dill asked what was going on and Jem said that he was worried about his dad Atticus and wanted to check up on him. The three of them walked into town, passing by Mrs. Du Bois's house, whose house now was overgrown with shrubbery and flowers after she had passed away, and they continued on to the bank where Atticus's office was located. Outside of the bank, they didn't see Atticus's car, and when they looked in the windows, it didn't seem like anybody was there. Jem suggested that Atticus might be visiting his friend, Mr. Underwood, and Mr. Underwood lived right next to the jail, and Mr. Underwood was the guy who wrote the town paper. Mr. Underwood liked to live next to the jail because if anything crazy happened, he could look right outside his window and see what was going on. As Jem, Scout, and Dill got closer to Mr. Underwood's house, they saw a faint light in the distance right outside the jail, and when they got closer, they saw Atticus in a chair reading a paper right outside the jail. Atticus had run the extension cord into one of the outlets inside the jail and had hung up the light outside so that he could read his paper. Scout started to sprint towards Atticus because she was excited to see him, but Jem caught her and told her that he wanted to go home because he just wanted to check to make sure Atticus was okay and that he didn't want to get in trouble for sneaking out late. The three of them started to sneak back home and as they started on their way, they saw four dusty old cars slowly driving down and stop right in front of the jail. Everything was super still, and Jem, Scout, and Dill decided to sneak back closer to see what was going on. All of a sudden, a huge group of men came out of the cars and surrounded Atticus. One of the men asked, He in there? Atticus responded and said, Yes, he is. Don't wake him. He's asleep, Walter. Walter came back and said, You know what we want. Atticus tried to scare the men off and said that Mr. Heck Tate, the sheriff, would be there soon. And one of the men suddenly laughed and said that they had sent the sheriff on a wild goose chase by making a fake call. Atticus tried to bluff and he said something to make the men think that he had a ton of backup coming soon, but it didn't seem like they fell for it. As Scout was watching the whole situation go down, Scout thought that they were going to get into a fist fight, and Scout was excited to see her dad beat all these guys up, and she sprinted in to get closer, to sit up on the gel and watch Atticus fight them. Scout pushed her way through the crowd of men, and when she saw her father's face, Scout says that it was something that she would never forget. She said that her father had the look of plain fear on his face, which disappeared as soon as he saw Scout, but came right back when Jem and Dill rushed through the crowd to catch up with Scout. Scout says that the men smelt like whiskey, and as she looked around at them, she didn't really recognize anybody. Atticus stood up trembling, and he told Jem to go home and to take Dill and Scout home. Jem said no, 
And as Atticus kept insisting on Jem to go home, Jem stood firm and refused to go home. One of the men shouted, I'll make him go home. And he grabbed Jem and swung him around. I'll send him home. Scout shouted, Don't you touch him! Scout didn't have any shoes on, and she swung her foot to kick one of the men in the shins, and instead kicked him in the balls, and the man fell to the ground. Atticus grabbed Scout and said, That'll do, Scout. Don't go around kicking people. One of the men shouted for Atticus to bring Tom Robinson out, and Atticus said that he wasn't going to do it. The man said that Atticus had 15 seconds to bring him out, and Atticus affirmed that he wasn't going to do it. Scout looked around to see if she could see a familiar face when she recognized one of her classmates' fathers, Walter Cunningham. Scout interrupted the tension by saying, Hey, Mr. Cunningham. She had to repeat this because the tension was so strong. Scout didn't really fully grasp exactly what was happening. And Scout repeated, Mr. Cunningham, how's your entailment going? Hey, Mr. Cunningham. I said, hey, Mr. Cunningham, how's your entailment getting along? Scout knew that Walter Cunningham had some legal trouble because one day she had asked Atticus what he did at work, and Atticus told of Walter Cunningham's entailment issues. Mr. Cunningham seemed uncomfortable, and Scout thought that Mr. Cunningham just didn't recognize her, and so she persisted on with trying to get Mr. Cunningham to recognize her. Scout told Mr. Cunningham, Don't you recognize me? I go to, I go to school with your son, Walter. She tells Mr. Cunningham that she beat Walter up one time, but that they were cool now, and that they had him over for dinner. Scout kept trying to connect the dots for Mr. Cunningham, but Mr. Cunningham was looking away shamefully, and Scout thought that Mr. Cunningham just didn't like the conversation she was talking about. Scout said that Atticus had taught her that you should talk about what other people want to talk about, and not necessarily what you want to talk about, and she changed the conversation back to his legal issues. Scout told Mr. Walter Cunningham, that entailments are bad, and that he should try to stay away from them. Scout stopped and looked around and noticed that everybody had their mouths half open. And she thought that she had done something embarrassing or something like that. She looked back towards Atticus in defense of her conversation choices and said, Well, I was just saying what you had said and how you and Mr. Cunningham were going to wait it out together. Everything was still, and Scout began to sweat because she didn't know what she had done wrong. As long as it's not that sick, twisted s and stuff. Mr. Cunningham bent down and grabbed Scout by the shoulders and told Scout that he was going to say hi to Walter for her. Walter stood up and told the men that they were going home. The men rushed back in their cars, and they drove off. When Scout turned around, Atticus was leaning against the wall, in complete relief that the whole situation was over. And then they suddenly heard a voice coming from Mr. Underwood's house. And Mr. Underwood was leaning out the window with a shotgun and said that he had Atticus's back the whole time. Another voice came from the forest asking if the men were gone. Atticus said, You can come out of there, Tom. Tom Robinson came out of the woods and walked back into the jail. Scout still didn't realize exactly what had happened, but Jem and Dill were more attuned to what had happened. Dill asked Atticus if he could take his chair for him inside the jail, sort of out of respect for a new hero because Atticus was so brave in the situation. And as Dill was dragging in the chair and Scout followed along, Scout thought that Atticus would be upset because they're out late. But as they were walking into the jail, Scout noticed that Atticus was rubbing Jem's hair, which was one of his only signs of affection. Oh, Jibba. And that concludes the chapter. Thanks so much for watching Book Cheats. Please leave that like and subscribe. If you have any questions from your homework, leave a comment down below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. You guys have an awesome day. Slack on.